We are almost there, guys. Um, you are in that last stretch before Noche Buena. Everything should be set in motion, set in place. Ibinka is something that you see only during this season, and it seems like something that is made mostly outside of churches, in the street with some coals and everything, so you wouldn't really think about making it at home. So without further ado, I'm gonna show you how I make my Ibinka at home. Last recipe, might as well go big or go home and go full on Filipino and full on traditional. We're making bibinka. Bibinka is something I don't really understand why it's not available all year round because it's absolutely delicious. I would love to eat it all year round. So to all the bibinka vendors right there, please make that happen one day. Um, but if not, you have to go to church, um, next to churches during the Christmas period and you'll usually see the bibinka vendors. I've s researched this recipe quite a bit um, and a lot of people do it with rice flour, glutinous rice flour, all-purpose flour, and then the oven. We will do that if this first attempt <laughs> doesn't work out, then we'll go the easy route. But for the first attempt, I really wanted to try to do it as traditional as possible. And that means using fresh charcoal, using actual sticky rice mixed with white rice. So this is a, a violet sticky rice from Ifugao with some white rice being soaked overnight, which we're gonna turn into the starch that we need um, for the cake. And, um, and we'll see if that works. Yeah, it's one of those recipes. We're not sure if we're gonna make it, but cheer for me and hopefully we'll get there. Um, so very simple. As I said, I have purple sticky rice from the mountain province that's been soaking with some white rice for about eight hours now or overnight. I'm gonna go ahead and just strain that. Once we have that, we're gonna place it all in the blender. What's this called? There's a term for it. No, no one, no one. My leg kit is sticky rice. Galapong. Galapong is the ground um, sticky rice. See? 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 Um, so we're going to go ahead and mix this up with um, some coconut milk. I'm going to put half of this first. Make sure that gets really smooth and then I'm going to add the rest of it. It's not working. Oh yeah. You have to turn something on before it works. I'm gonna add in the rest of the coconut milk. Actually, this is more like coconut cream. It's much thicker. It's much better to use coconut cream. And then to that, we're gonna add in some sugar as well. So I'm using one and one half cup of sugar. That needs to get very smooth. When you have something smooth, you can taste it. It has a little bit of grain, but not too much, and you're good to go. So we're gonna keep this to the side for now. Get one big bowl and crack in six eggs. Whisk all that together. We're not looking for something creamy, so just very lightly beaten. And then we're gonna go ahead and then add our galapong. So you see that nice, beautiful, almost purple tinge? Well, that's from the rice. So I've actually seen bibinka made with ube as well, with a much stronger purple color. Um, Jesus, it's loud today. Be quiet, it's Christmas! Mixture's ready, we're gonna go ahead and add the last piece of our puzzle, which is one just one tablespoon of baking powder. So at this point, you would think that the hard part is done, but my friends, no it isn't. It is only just beginning. So now we need to figure out how to cook it actually traditionally. Um, if you go to the churches, you'll see that people, it's two things really. First, clay pots with um, charcoal inside that's nice and hot. Uh, usually there's a slight opening on the clay pot so that allows more oxygen to come in so it keeps um, the charcoal burning nicely. We don't have a hole in our clay pot today, so we'll try it out like this. Then you put whatever vessel that you have, should be another clay pot, can be a stone pot like this, um, could be cast iron, would work just as well. Put that on top, then we're gonna put the mixture inside and cover that up with a tin with even more charcoal. So basically we're, we're trying to, to make like an oven-like environment. So because we're trying not to use the oven, because I think that's the easy way out for this recipe, um, let's figure this out first and hopefully it works. So all of this I stole from my mom's house. Thanks mom, <laughs> she has no idea. All right, so first thing first, we're gonna go ahead and fill up our bibinka mold. I'm using this today because nothing else would fit in here, so hopefully this works. I have some banana leaf that I just recently ran through fire and cleaned so it gets nice and nimble so we can actually use it. Cut that up. Usually you want it to be more or less twice the size of what you'll need. 
And then this part here, we can actually cut off. We don't need that thick part. So now you should have something nice and malleable. We'll put that in here. Let's do that again. Good thing there's a lot of, of banana trees in the Philippines because we're gonna go through a couple today. What happened again? All right, take your mixture, put everything inside. I'm gonna fill it up about halfway. Because it should rise. It, well, if it works, it should rise. Clay pot, charcoal, inside the clay pot. Oh, the things I do. Probably a much easier way to do this. It's hot. Then let's fit this in carefully. Cover. I'm gonna double line this just in case, just like Wallen said. And how long is this gonna take to cook? I have absolutely no idea. Okay, version number two, heavy cast iron pan. Still the same galapong mixture. Hopefully this works. <laughs> it's a big ass bibinka. <laughs> I don't have small cast, actually wait, I do have a small cast iron, but no medium. <laughs> so we'll make another baby version, small cast iron version. Both of these, oven at 350 Fahrenheit, leave it for 20 minutes, see what happens. Okay, moment of truth, it's been 25 minutes, both in the oven and here. Remember, we're using the galopong mixture here, so what I'm looking for is something, hopefully, that puffed up a little bit. Oh my god, it worked. It actually worked. It's not, it's not a perfect, perfect circle, because obviously I'm the type of person that doesn't really care about those things. Um, but yeah, you've got that nice crunch. If I touch it, it's a bit, it's very fluffy, but it's still a bit soft, and you have that nice browning. So I'm gonna add in some cheese right on top, and um, we're gonna leave that for about 10 to 15 more minutes. Now let's check the ones that are in the oven. We totally forgot, by the way, to add the salted egg. If you want to add salted egg and make it bibinka especial, this recipe, I, I called it bibinka. I didn't say bibinka especial. If you wanna make it bibinka especial, um, basically, we cooked it for 25 minutes. You'd wanna take it out at 12 minutes, around halfway, and then cut it in. So it's still really soft so that the eggs do sink in a little bit in the batter, but stay quite high. We just forgot to. Well, I forgot to. Um, let's take out our pans. <laughs> it's like a big pimple. Yes. So that worked also, um, obviously much hotter, so it really went up, but what I'm really happy about is that it seems very fluffy and airy. So we're gonna go ahead and put some cheese on both of these, and these go in for about 15 minutes as well. And then right at the end, we're gonna slap it with some desiccated coconut from the nyog, so it has some moisture still in it, and a little bit of coconut sugar. Let's take everything out. A little baby bibinka. Got the massive one. <laughs> I put another one in there with a more correct shape. This, I think the cheese is maybe cooked a little too much. And let's see this one. So the issue we had with this one was the cheese actually stuck to the bottom of this thing. Um, so the crust kind of came out. So I put a banana leaf and it's also sticking, but it still looks really nice. That's what I didn't think about. How do I then, how do I take out this black thing? Ooh, it's hot. All right. Oh no. There you go. So if I were to do this again, I'd make sure to get a clay pot, one that was designed to make this. Uh, two, that would have like an opening or a hole so that you'd actually get more embers in the bottom because it needs that oxygen to breathe. So now that we have everything here, all that's left to do is kind of finish the bibinka. Traditionally, you take some butter, so that's what we're gonna do. Then some fresh coconut, some freshly grated nyog coconut, and finally, muscovado, coconut, brown, whatever sugar you wanna use. I wanna use coconut because it's not too sweet, but it has a nice sweetness. Some people actually don't even do this part. If your mixture is already quite sweet, you don't really need to top it, but I just like the crunch and texture it brings. Now the actual moment of truth, let's take it out. It should stay, there you go. 
Nice and fluffy, nice and light. Has a really cool color because of the purple rice. Flavor is nice, but that's the oven one. And I'm really missing the, the char and the smoke of the charcoal. And I think this one will be much tastier. It's just not as easy to grab. Let's try it. It's cheesy, it's fluffy. It's very kind of like, it has this really tender flavor, which I really like, I mean texture rather. But to me, it works really well. So flavor wise, do I think this was a success? Definitely. Technique wise, I think leave it to your <laughs> bibinka maker. <laughs> I would never make this at home again. The taste, definitely really good. And since it's galapong, it's like, it's almost meatier. Cause something like, if you use glutinous rice flour and everything, you have kind of like that cakey vibe. This is like between a cake and a flan, so it's really nice. But I'm happy with that. I could eat it all day, every day. But as proof, my friend Chester here is gonna try to taste it. Wow, so guapo, look at him. <laughs> try this one, go. If it's disgusting, you tell me, huh? You tell me like 100% and be like, that's gross. Is it good? Yeah. You're not lying? Yeah, it's good. Are you sure you're not lying to the, to to the people of the Philippines? He's like, <coughs> oh, no, it's delicious, it's so good. <laughs> it was cooked in the oven. Yeah. That, that's the oven one, yeah. Which one's better? This one. This one. Me too. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Merry Christmas. That's the last episode of the Christmas series. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This was more of like an experiment, less of a recipe. Um, so if you guys want to try it at home, it's not my fault, mom. <laughs>